In this video, you are going to learn how to manage your decentralized exchange arbitrage bot. In case you are new, in this channel, I prove to you one of the effective ways in which you can make money from the financial market automatically. If that is your area of interest, please click on the subscribe button and like this video. Let's dive in. So, the first thing that you are going to do is to install Visual Studio Code if you have not already done so. So, to install Visual Studio Code, navigate to this website URL code.visualstudio.com slash download or you can just search VS Code Download on Google. Then download on your operating system. When you are done downloading, open Visual Studio Code. Click on this extension icon and then search SSH. You are going to see Remote SSH by Microsoft. Click on it and click on Install. In my case, I have already installed it. That's why it is showing Uninstall. So click on Install. Now, after installation, click on this search icon. Then on your keyboard, click Shift and then right arrow key. Then you are going to see some options. If you don't see remote SSH, then you can search remote SSH here. So I am going to click remote SSH. In my case, I already have two server in which I am connected to. That is why it is showing me the two IP addresses of the server. In your case, you might not find any IP address. So you have to click on add new SSH. Then this is where you are going to type the user as well as the domain of the server that you want to connect to. So it is going to look like this. Paste your server IP address and then click on enter. It is going to take some time to initialize the server. Just wait for it to connect. Now it is going to ask for password for the server. Now type the password of your server and then wait for it to initialize. You are going to see this button is going to show initializing. And when you see your IP address like this, SSH with the IP address of your server, then you have successfully connected to the server. Remember when we installed extension to be able to connect to our server via SSH. Now we have connected to the server and we still need to install one extension that is going to enable us to work with our arbitrage bots. So click on this extension again and then search Excel Viewer. Yeah, here you go by Grape City. Click on Excel Viewer and click on Install. If at any given point you see Enable button, just click on that Enable button to enable it on your remote server. When done, click on this button and then click on open folder. Now you can see it automatically directs you to a specific folder. Now we want to go to the very first home directory, which is going to be the root directory, but not this one that you are seeing on the screen. So clear anything you are seeing and leave only the slash, then click on enter. So at some point it is going to prompt it is going to ask you to put a password, just input your password. So you are going to see a screen like this. So the home directory is where I put your trading bot files. Click on the home directory to show the data that is there. When you click on it, you are going to see two directories, which is going to be arbitrage bot arbitrum as well as user. This user directory is what your blockchain is using. So do not alter anything on this user directory. Your blockchain is also using this user, this directory here, which, which is USR as user. And then inside that directory, local, arbitrum. And then you will see that there are some files in which your blockchain is using to run. So there's a blockchain being installed in this your server. So you are not allowed to modify anything or alter anything on the server, on the directory. Otherwise, your blockchain might stop running. So now the directory in which you are going to work on is this arbitrage bots arbitrum. 
For now, it is only Arbitrum network that is available, but later in the future, there's going to be other networks. I'm, I am going to add other networks to it. So click on this arbitrage bot Arbitrum. So once you click on this arbitrage bot Arbitrum directory, you are going to see a folder of your name. So now click on the folder that belongs to you and there you will find so these are the files for your trading bots. The most essential part is the settings directory as well as the logs. The logs directory is where you are going to find the information regarding your trades or warning or error messages. So you are going to find it here. And the settings is where you are going to set the parameters in which your bot is going to use to execute trades. So that is it. The dependencies file, I am going to show you how to use that later if at any given point you want to do something on it. If at any given point you want to fetch pairs after fetching it before, you want to start from the first Genesis block to fetch pairs again. I'm going to show you how to use the files in the dependencies to do that. So now click on the settings file to open it you will be able to edit this settings file inside your Visual Studio code because of the Excel Viewer extension that we install. The automatic volume is where you are going to set if you want your board to decide the trade size or you want to set it manually. For example, if it is on yes, it means your board is going to automatically calculate the arbitrage trading size based on the price impact that you impute here. If it is no, then you have to manually specify the amount that you want to execute arbitrage with. For example, you can say $200 and you have to specify that amount both in USD amount, which is here, WETH amount, as well as a b r which is arbitrum amount which is going to be here so remember w e t h is different from e t h w e t h is a token in which you will need to get in your metamax wallet is different from e t h so now the max price impact is where you are going to specify the max maximum price impacts you want your board to use while calculating automatic trading volume the max price impact is only taken into consideration if the trade volume, which is if the automatic trade volume is set to yes. Else, if it is set to no, this volume is going to be taken and the max price impact is going to ignore. It is recommended to use the automatic volume if you don't really know what you are doing. But in some case, you might decide to use the volume that you specified here you can say i want to execute arbitrage with this amount but based on the price impact sometimes the arbitrage might not be available if you use a higher amount so that is why it is recommended to allow your board to choose the trading volume based on the price impact that you specify if at any given point for example you have five thousand dollars inside your metamax and the trade volume is greater than five thousand dollars let's assume the trade volume the automatic trade volume that is calculated from your bot is up to ten thousand dollars then your bot is going to automatically use the five thousand dollars that is available and execute the arbitrage and return the available profits to you now the minimum profit threshold is the minimum profit that you tolerate that means if the minimum profit that is going to be available on the arbitrage is not up to this amount your bot is going to skip executing the arbitrage so let's assume your bot was about to execute arbitrage on sushi swap to uniswap then at the end the profit that you are going to make is less than this specified amount here then your bot is not going to execute the arbitrage it's going to ignore so this is where you specify the amount in usd value and so this should not be a floating number that is decimal number should only be an integer but here you can put floating number here as well as here so this is the minimum profit threshold in weth as well as the minimum profit threshold in 
arbitrum so you can decide to change it based on the price of eth as well as arbitrum so this is the maximum gas in weight that is the maximum gas that you are willing to pay per transaction so if at any given point the transaction is greater than this amount in weight then the arbitrage the transaction is going to revert so that you won't spend more than gas fee that you're supposed to spend this pool minimum liquidity tolerance is the liquidity that you are willing to tolerate before you can fetch the pool so your bot is going to automatically check if the liquidity of a certain pool is up to five thousand dollars or three w eth as well as four thousand arbitrum before it can fetch the pools to arbitrage let's assume your bot is about to execute trade on uniswap to app swap and is going to execute trade with a token called gmx on uniswap gmx has a liquidity greater than five thousand then on app swap gmx has a liquidity less than five thousand in that case your bot is going to ignore fetching the pair from ape swap because the liquidity is not up to the tolerance that you are willing to tolerate that is the reason why it is always recommended to fetch pairs again because the liquidity might change at any given point so maybe once in a week you will have to fetch the pairs again so you have to pause stop your bot and run it again to fetch more pairs I am going to show you how to do that later in this video. So this Telegram API key is where you are going to set your Telegram API key that you created from Telegram. So you go, you are going to create a bot on Telegram and generate an API key. If you don't know how to do this, there's going to be a video here. Check on the timeline and you are going to see how to create Telegram API key as well as how to get your Telegram admin ID. So the formats that you are going to put the telegram admin id is true comma separated values so id one remember to put it in square brackets if you don't put it in square bracket it is going to throw an error so it's going to be id one id two and id three if you have different users to add as a mean to this your bot but if it is only one user then you can only leave only the id of that user the MEV contract ID is the contract ID that is going to deploy specifically for you. So whenever you order your trading bot, I am going to send you the contract ID. Your contract ID is unique for you to use. And this is where you are going to put your wallet address. So get your wallet address that you want to use to execute this arbitrage and just, just paste it here. Then this is where you are going to impute your private key. Get your private key from that wallet address and then paste it here. This RPC URL is where you are going to impute your node RPC URL. So your Arbitrum node is currently running on localhost port 8547. So you just have to leave it by default. But if you are running it by yourself and you are using other ports, you can just specify the ports. Or you might see localhost or localhost IP address. It's also the same thing. So just leave it there by default. So when you are done setting up your parameters, just click on Control S to save your board file settings. Remember to save it else it is not going to work. Then click here to cancel and then navigate to your terminal. If you don't see the terminal, for example, maybe the terminal is no longer here. Just click on this place and it's going to pop up the terminal. So click on terminal and then maximize it. Then if on your terminal, if you type ls, you are going to see all the directories, which is the directories that we have here. So we want to navigate to this directory, which is going to be the user that is that wants to run this bot. So just click on this Arbitrum directory for this user, which is going to be user with the username. So I'm going to right click on it and then click on copy parts. Then on your terminal, type cd to slash and then paste the URL that you copied. 
then click on enter then you are going to automatically navigate to that di directory to clear the terminal just type clear and then to list all the files that is in this directory just type ls now you can see the that dependencies log main.py requirement.txt all the files that is available here so what we want to do now is that we want to run our trading bots.